Well, it's another exciting Wednesday here at Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Chris Leatham. Uh, the show is called The Economy and You. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about technology stuff. Hey, don't, don't, don't leave. We're, stay here because this is going to be a kind of an interesting conversation. What we're going to talk about today, um, we're going to talk a little bit about how do you take a seed of an idea and germinate that into something like an application or a software idea or something that you can turn into some kind of a business for your livelihood. Because, you know, Hawaii is all about small business. And today's guest is somebody who's actually accomplished all of this. Today's guest is Gabe Mott. Gabe, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, and thank you for coming to The Economy and You. Thanks for having me. Great yeah, well, you're welcome. And you started a, a company called, uh, your latest venture is called Hudoku. Yeah. Um, it's an application and it's built, what kind of technology did you use for that? So it's, it's built uh, just for iPhones and iPads, so it's on iOS, uh -huh. and so it's built all natively using Objective-C. Objective-C, okay. And so my, my partner Dave uh, codes, and his, you know, his, his just best code is Objective-C. Now you can code in Swift. Yes. For for iPhones and you know, iPads, That's but we're right. still we're still using what we what we already built this whole thing uh -huh. on and moving forward. And with it. and there's also a platform called Zamarin. Zamarin. How Zamarin. You, Zamarin? you haven't heard of Zamarin? Okay, Zamarin is for all those Microsoft uh, right. .NET guys that want to be able to write iPhone apps, but we can't. Yeah. We don't have it in us to learn Swift, so we have another platform called Zamarin, which allows us to develop applications for the iPhone uh, as well. So that's kind of a cool platform. But, um, you know, Gabe, um, I really wanted to talk to today's show, uh, um, talk about this whole thing about where do you start? Because, you know, um, I had a great conversation with somebody for a couple hours last night, and they have an idea for something. They have no programming background. Um, they've never developed an application, but oh, hey, I've got an idea that's going to make me uh, buku bucks. And, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a much easier said than done. I, I mean, I, there's got to be as many ways to start as there are stories of starting, you know what I mean? I mean, I think, uh -huh. I, think it, it, it all, it, I guess for us, like, it was an idea literally sketched out on a napkin, our first, our first project, mm -hmm. and then it was talking to kind of anybody who would listen to begin to formulate the idea and asking for resources and not expecting them to do anything for you. They're not gonna, you're, not, you're not going out asking for help to have them do it for you. You've got, you're just doing research uh -huh. and then you're getting online and you're getting a key word of something you heard from somebody and you're learning this stuff to figure mm -hmm. out what are the next steps. And for us, the first uh, kind of break for us was founding the perfect online forum of coders around the world who are willing to help because um, mm -hmm. they like the idea of the project. So it was getting sort of buy-in uh, um, into the project. Yeah, I think it, like having the passion about it, getting people excited, wanting to, and wanting people. People like to help. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But they're 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 unlikely to help finish as much as they are help you just you know a small step <laughs> along the way. Yeah. You know? And so yeah. it just takes a lot of perseverance. So now, how long did it take you to to, to develop your first app, your first? Uh, uh, application that you worked on. What was the timeline on that? Hudoku's timeline was funny because uh, my friend Dave um, is a developer, and he he had, at one point had said, "Hey, I can code anything. Mm -hmm. If you have any ideas for an app, let's do that." And yeah. I was like, "Well, yeah, here's the idea. You know, we had been working with Color for about five or six years at that point, and had an idea for this idea that uh, you could make the Sudoku for Color. And so I showed it to him what the idea was." And then, like, a few months passed. And one day, out of the blue, I get this email, and I can download on my phone the basic, basic version. Uh -huh. So, but that was interesting because the basic, you know, our, our, ours is a color puzzle called right. Hudoku. And the puzzle, right off the bat, the funnest thing was it's an idea, and then you get to play it. You yeah. get to see the thing in action. Uh -huh. But that first step, even though it looks cool, I mean, you're not even close. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that first layer is so easy, but every layer you add just gets more complicated. And like they say, the last what little bit is just the, the longest and toughest to get through because you now you have complicated code. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the thing about code is it, it, it sort of exp it exponentially grows. Yeah. 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 And the problem, of course, then is that when you write more code, you start to use more resources. You use more resources, things start to slow down. Yeah. Um, things get, you know, you end up writing redundant code, doing things over and over and over again. And um, so you're looking for ways to sort of mitigate all that uh, from a programming perspective. But just even the idea of having, you know, coming up with an idea, it, it does, uh, sometimes I think it feels like it's a shot in the dark. Yeah. 
you know, yeah. uh, you, you have some idea and you're just going to throw it out there to the world and, and see what happens. And, and I, think, I think you really need to uh, be creative and try different things. I mean, if I was starting right now, mm -hmm. I, I've, I, I, every month or so, I get on one of those like courses like Code Academy or Treehouse and I start like making sure I'm kind of like up to speed on a little bit of code. Uh -huh. But I think you can and learn a lot of things. Yeah, and okay. then this was like your your napkin here. This is essentially your uh, yeah. where you started. No, so, so September twentieth. I'd have to look up the year on that, but it was probably uh, four or five years ago for this project. Where you see the little picture down in the corner uh -huh. there. I had an experience with uh, design and art, and yeah. wanted to create <coughs> an experience that everybody could share. Mm -hmm. And I imagined a room you walk into where you touch colors on the wall, and the whole room changes colors. And that's that. I had no idea how to build that. I had no idea. I knew it would involve a projector, I assumed. Uh -huh. But then to make things touch responsive, you know. Um, and it was literally, I think, the, the, the biggest piece of advice I could put out there is just make something. Just get it up uh -huh. and start showing it to people. Because, like, let's say you have this idea for how it works, and you think you know the whole thing, and you hire all this, you know, this, this design team and coding team, and they build it. But you could have put up one screen, in our case, had people walk in and start trying to interact with it and find out immediately that you've thought of something wrong. Mm -hmm. you know? So that, that's kind of the philosophy I'm, what we're doing is like you know, the, the agile, iterate, iterate fast, release, test it, test it, get, yeah. it, get that cycle really sharp you know, where you're putting stuff out and you're getting feedback on it and can um, make changes. You but know? That's a, and that's a, that's a very different design approach than say somebody who comes from my background, yeah. which is there's already established business practices. Like I'm, I've developed software for companies, businesses. I'm trying to figure out way to streamline, ways to streamline their business processes, reduce redundancy, figure out how to make their business more efficient. I'm operating on a very different level in terms of software development. So there are those types of platform, or that type of development where a waterfall approach is more consistent with achieving your results. Although, at some point, you do iterate in, end up in, in sort of an iterative state. You know? But in the beginning phase of, of software development, if Zuri will bring that slide back up again, <laughs> is you start with requirements gathering and, and analysis. And I've underlined it because that's really what today's topic is about. It's about you know, that sort of gathering the ideas and putting things together and, 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 and doing, your, doing your homework. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and then when you were doing your homework, you were using, you were going out on the web, you were talking to folks, you were talking to development teams. We were doing um, uh, surveys through MailChimp, literally like, you know, tabulating surveys. Mm -hmm. We were doing, um, we would then like release like, you know, Mechanical Turk, you can like pay a small amount and Amazon runs a, a system where they'll put up, you can get user testing. People will say, I, I prefer this screen to this screen. Um, we had a, a, a focus group we were in the Blue Startups Accelerator, okay. and we had one of our mentors was Wanda, who was this incredible uh, marketing person, and she led a focus group for us. Yes. And that was part of our, you know, getting our requirements and, and you know, that, that documented. Um, and I think for someone who's new at this, it really helps to understand that, like, when you show your friend an idea, they're going to say that's cool, <laughs> yeah. right? Your friends always tell your stuff is cool because, well, they like you, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and even someone who doesn't know you, uh -huh. like we would go to Starbucks and buy somebody a coffee and say, hey, will you spend five, ten minutes with us and just try, try this? And they say, oh, what do I push? And you, you got to like not, because what happens is you explain how to use it. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do it. Yeah. But it's, it's a lot harder than you think. You think, oh, yeah, I can do that. I can, I can I keep my mouth shut and just like have them experience it. But like we were saying earlier uh, when we talked on the phone, I think it's more revealing what they don't say, right, and how they behave mm -hmm. interacting with it as you're kind of building those requirements, you know. And when you're, when you, when you, and then the thing is, is how do you, how do you make sure that you're not doing testing that's sort of vanity testing, or you're asking vanity questions where you know you're, you're sort of eliciting a response. Because you love the answer you yeah, have, and you want to get them yeah, to say that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> you really want this feature, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> now, um, so what kind of like when you started learning to sort of figure out like how to sort of take this idea and germinate it into something beneficial or useful? Uh, how many iterations do you think you've gone through so far? I mean, it's, I mean, we, we were putting out releases, you know, like, uh, we had two digits, you know, in a release. It was like yeah. 0. You know, 0.01, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. And we got up to 0. 0.99, like, way before we were ready for 1.0. <laughs> so, I mean, hundreds. We've yeah. had hundreds, we've hundred, hundreds of builds. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. 
Now, how long have you been at this working on Hudoku? Um, from the original C, probably two years. You know, but then I said like it was like about three or four months before, and I, I, I even knew that you know Dave was actually building it and had something to start with. Mm -hmm. um, but then we started it in Maui, you know, and we were doing other things and we kind of like started you know building this on the side, and then. A few months later, we had a chance to kind of show it to an audience at an event, and we had 500 people kind of play with it, and we're like, "Oh, this is this is this could be something," and then it was like it took all that time before we were like, "Oh, we're gonna actually make a startup and incorporate uh -huh. and try to like bring this out to the world." So now, um, two years—that's a lot. That's a lot of time on a software application. Yeah, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah. So how do you maintain your energy? Oh, uh, that's a great question. I think um, the thing about what, what any sort of startup gets into is you realize the lows are really low. They're really hard. They're, they're, you're, you're, nobody else cares about you anymore, and you're on this like, vacuum. <laughs> you're not feeling any you're love. Going along. <laughs> but then the highs, uh -huh. like, we, we, went, we went to Europe to launch uh, our beta of this newest app two months ago at Startup Fest Europe. And because we were like from Hawaii, they were like, what are you doing here? And we, we, we stood out. Uh -huh. And we got to meet with like these world class museums. Like the, the Prince of Holland mm -hmm. uh, got us connected to the museums out there. And so those highs are just like really high, you know, much uh -huh. more thrilling, I think, than in, wow. in a regular job for me. Wow, wow. And so um, now, so let's go back and sort of focus in on, on what we're talking about, sort of yeah. the sort of the, the getting this going. So I would would like to have Zuri bring up the next uh, the next slide, if you don't mind, Zuri. Okay. So um, one of the things that we uh, we use to try and help us sort of map our ideas is something called UML modeling, and we use things like case diagrams, and which is basically a a graphical depiction of the interactions among the elements of a system. So in other words. This is sort of what the users are doing, you know. Mm -hmm. So a user is sort of an actor, and you, you build a use case scenario, and you talk about the things that the user is going to be doing with the application. Now, these are tools that also help you to sort of define your ideas and also communicate them with your developers, yep. right? So, um, you know, and one of the reasons I, I wanted to bring this up is because um, these are tools that if you're going to develop software, I feel help you get your point across, make your point, uh, lay out your ideas and your concepts in a meaningful way. Yeah. Um, and so, um, I don't know, if, Zuri, could you bring up the, uh, the diagram of the stick, the, the little people? Um, uh, the one that has a couple of characters on each side and all the bubbles? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a use case to diagram of somebody going up and walking up to an ATM machine and, and using the ATM. So you're going to insert your card, you're going to enter your PIN number, you're going to select an account. And then select a dollar amount and, and so on. So, this is sort of defining what the user is doing. Now, in the use case diagram like this, so you may have a security system that's doing some validation and checks to make sure one, it's not a stolen card. Two, that maybe you you know you got actual money in the account. You know that you're you're, you're you're taking out, and if the card is stolen or something like that, that it would it would take the card and also now if the card isn't stolen, of course, when the transaction is over, give you your card back. You right, know, right. so this is an idea of what a, a, a uh, what a, um, a scenario, what that kind of a scenario looks like. Now, for your software, okay, you have probably from the user's perspective, you have a lot more going on. There's a lot more interaction. Well, and I'm curious if you would do this too uh -huh. with, with enterprise stuff. But like for for us, it was really important to take the use case. Let's say a, an art teacher in uh -huh. the classroom. That's a use case. She's going to teach some some color concepts to some students. So that would be one use case, and that would be a designer who wants to help some clients brainstorm on colors. Uh -huh. Two different uses, but our app fits both of those. Okay. And and so I don't know if you guys did this, but we would we would take that use that, that that example of that teacher, and we would literally create a persona. This okay. is a woman in her forties. She does she does this in the classroom and try to like really just understand everything she does outside of the app, and then we put the app in her hand, and we try to draw, illustrate a story. Like, what story are we telling mm -hmm. you know, with her, and how does, that, how does the app need to um, best respond to her? Kind of like earlier you said, we're gonna, we have our own preconceived ideas of what it should do, but we find out she wants just that one button right there, not all these that other features feature, here. The one yeah. It's called feature adoption. So yeah, so um, we're gonna take a quick break. We got a one minute commercial break that we're gonna take and we're gonna come right back. And that's actually a very interesting point. So we're gonna talk about that more here at The Economy and You and we'll see you in just one moment. Aloha, this is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at two o'clock. 
We would love to hear from you and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Hey everybody, my name is David Chang and I am a new host for the show, The Art of Thinking Smart. I'm really excited to be able to share with you how to get the smart edge in life. We're going to have awesome guests in the military, business, political, nonprofit world. So no matter what background you're from, we have something for you. Please join us every other Thursday at 10 a.m. at thinktechhawaii.com or on theartofthinkingsmart.com. I look forward to seeing you. Yeah, and we're back. Hi, I'm Chris Leith, and this is Economy, and you thank you for watching. We're talking about developing software, develop, taking an idea and converting that from the napkin and turning it into code or turning it into a computer program that people will actually get a chance to use and sort of what that's like and what, what it takes to, 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 to get involved in that and get started. And today's guest is Gabe Mott. And Gabe works with, uh, has been developing a software called Hudoku. Hudoku, let me say that right, Hudoku, yeah. which is uh, an, app, uh, uh, an iOS app um, that works on your phone. And is, I guess it's a game, or is it like with objectives? Well, we, we see um, the idea of, of color, like the color perception, understanding color, how to, like, uh -huh. we see that it actually is a really important uh, thing for people now that everybody has iPhones and you know, smartphones and screens mm -hmm. and is producing imagery. And the power of the image as a means of communication you know, has never been more powerful than it is today. Like it's always been true, the image is worth a thousand words, but we're, we're, we believe that people don't actually know how to sort of have much visual literacy and speak color grammar. Okay. So how do they see color? So our app is a tool that helps you do that um, but it also, right now, the, the new app is a, um, a photo sharing app. Okay. Where, you know, like, you're probably on Facebook, maybe. I don't know if you know people that are on yes, Facebook. Yes, I would deny it, though. I and, will, and, I'm not there, so my daughters don't can keep posting stuff. So, yeah, right, and they worry. put it on Instagram, <laughs> and, and your daughter's probably like, how many likes did I get? You know, <laughs> how many likes did I get? We sort of think people are looking for a deeper experience of photo sharing. Mm -hmm. Like, did you really look at my photo? Did you actually spend time with this photo I, uh, from my trip to Madagascar? Did you look at it? And so what I would do is I, I would take a photo, wrap it into the color puzzle, send it to you, uh -huh. or post it, post it on the feed, and you have to solve the puzzle to get the reveal, which is the photo. Oh, okay. And so we're, we're, we're positioning this you know, as uh, a way to kind of engage deeper, to slow down, relax, get color therapy, mm -hmm. um, and then also see it as like a, a sort of a brain cognition tool. Well, that's interesting because, you know, we, we are, uh, we stopped, we stopped reading. We now we scan, right? right? You know, we, we now don't even you know read stuff. And if it's if it takes me more than two seconds to read it, yeah, I start to um, I start to wander. You know, my brain yeah. starts to go in different places, and I'm going, wow. You know, I can't believe my attention span has turned into this sort of two, you know, less than two seconds. You know, or I'm I'm ready to move on to something else, and I'm lazy. I've gotten lazy now. Yeah. I, I don't like to read. I just go to video. You know. I mean, don't don't you think like. Maybe it's going to get worse, but I think almost all of us that have our little phone devices, I think we all have that feeling of we're on it too much. We have this addiction to it. It's this technology. It's making us even less, and our attention span shorter and shorter. Um, and less, and we're becoming less engaging, I think, in communication and, and in conversation. With each other. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I sort of think there's, there's probably already, but there's a sort of a backlash against that of like people taking, you know, a, day, a weekend off of a screen. There are apps, uh, there's an app called Calm that I use. It's a meditation app. Mm -hmm. and it sets up like every day, five minutes. And it just, it's, it's funny because it's using technology to try to be more engaged with the world and yourself. Mm -hmm. But we sort of see Hudoku in, in line with um, those kinds of apps. Like we're not trying to like make you, you know, you know sort of more of a digital addicted being, but kind yeah. of let you step back and use color therapy. And that See, I went and joined a Zen monastery when I was in, um, in my <laughs> There's early always 20s and spent a year there. So, you know, <laughs> I'm like, uh, you know, th that was my way of getting away from the world. And, uh, you know, but now we've got an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> your Zen monastery. They do have one called 40 Years of Zen. And you get your 40 Years of Zen. Yeah, they measure your brainwaves and tell you you get the same results from this, like, you know, one month program of biofeedback. <laughs> Somehow it so. just doesn't feel as deep and meaningful, you know. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. Yeah, it doesn't. 
So well, let's let's get back to what we were talking about, you know, because this is really when we. Um, I, I, I wanted to have the show because I want to encourage folks out there, if you've got an idea, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to step up uh, and engage, you know, and find resources and uh, talk to other people about your idea. <coughs> you know, you may have some, um, and I hate to use this word, paradigm shifts as you go along uh, and realizing that, you know, maybe your original idea um, uh, didn't have enough, you know, it didn't have a lot of legs to it. Maybe it sounded really good, but maybe it didn't have a lot of legs. And so sometimes what you're doing is you're, you take that original idea and you pivot into different directions. And maybe you go into a different direction. But also one of the things that we talked about is as you're developing the app, as you said, you wanted to get feedback from the users. Um, one of the issues early in, in uh, cell phone or, or, um, or you know, uh, smartphone marketing was feature adoption. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in not just in terms of all the things that you can do with a phone. I mean, most of us don't use everything that's on our phone. Um, is and if we're developing an application, what parts of that application are being adopted? Which ones are easy to use, and which ones require a little more thought and maybe need more more effort in the design? You know, it's funny. I, I had a meeting with um, some. Um, younger guys that were applying to the, our, our, our program and they had this really cool idea for an app. Mm -hmm. and, and they were like, how do we get a developer? And they were so fixated on how do we get a developer. Um, and I was like, God, once you find a developer, you still have, you still have a lot of work yes. to do on your end. I was like, you guys sit down and look at, draw your little screen and every button there, you need to describe exactly what happens when you mm -hmm. click that button. Mm -hmm. All the possibilities. What happens if they close the app right now? What happens mm -hmm. if they... And you need to draw those out, like the charts you're talking about. Right. Like, you can do that. Like, you don't have... You, you can start learning how to do that, but it's, it's just logic and steps and a lot of work, right? Oh, well, yeah. And then, and that's, of course... <laughs> that's, and then, of course, that's not even considering all the, the aspects that a programmer has to look at. Because if you're a developer, then you're going to look at things like the architecture. Right. Is it going to be used across multiple platforms? You know, if it's only going to be work, work across a phone, and it, it can all be self-contained, great, that's, that's great. But if it's an application that's going to be used across multiple platforms, then you have to sort of have uh, all your business logic uh, as a separate platform, and then, and then whatever interface that you have is going to connect to that. But they're basically, it's a separate development environment. Uh, we, uh, we, yeah. would, we would have, uh, my co-founder and I would have these, these battles where, um, I don't know if this is at all true in the enterprise just software world, but like with the app, you've got lots of SDKs where third-party companies have built the automated, you know, small piece you can put into your code, mm -hmm. and he just fights me. No more SDKs, no more SDKs. And I'm like, yeah, but this one's going to tell us how many of our audience is coming back and we'll segment them, you know, yeah, analytics stuff. Yeah, except the next build that they have yeah. breaks your code. <laughs> that's, you know? exactly, that's exactly That's exactly what happens. Don't yeah, do that yeah, to me. I don't yeah. want you breaking my code, you know. Because so, you, then you, you know, so here are the things that, 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 that sort of the, the weird and the wonderful about, and the exciting thing with software development is that you've got all these people out there doing all kinds of weird and wonderful things that you can go and grab and use, but you also have to remember that you not, may use it in a testing environment, but it's not going. You're not going to want to release in your release code. You're not going to want to have that in there. Right, right. Well, he's. I'm not going to let him watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny. We have, we probably have like you know ten ten different SDKs in there, uh -huh. and um, that's his thing. He's like, they're going to go out of business. But we, you know, what happens if one, one of them fails, and it's yeah. like that brings everything down. So yeah, that's a thing you got to consider. Yeah, yeah, because you know you need to. One of the things, of course, when you write an application is that it's got some way of handling those issues. If, if something fails that, that your application has a, some sort of dependency on, right. uh, can you get around that? If you can't get around it, it brings your app, like, it's a chain of events, it brings you down yeah. with it. You know? So um, these are all sort of the exciting things. You know? And of course, uh, if your applications are data driven and you've got data back end, uh, back ends to these things, of course, is that connectivity is an imperative. What happens if you don't have connectivity? You know, will it still work? You right. know, will it um, allow you to do certain things? And then when it gets connectivity, you know, do, sort of push it out or or go back and retrace some of the stuff that it's done previously. And we have two two of our um, sort of uh, heaviest users uh, are on the airplane all the time, and they loved our first app because it worked offline. Mm -hmm. the, new, the new one is all cloud based, all getting in these live puzzles, and it doesn't work. You know. And, and we've, got to, we've got to balance these people that are putting a lot of pressure on us to make the offline version with how much work that is, mm -hmm. and is it worth it for the other users? How, like, where does that rank on, you know, 
the, the needs yes. from our, our user base. So how do people find out about your app? I mean, one of the reasons I asked you on the show is so you could, t you could tell people about Hudoku and where do they find it? How do they download it? Is it available? It's, it's available now. We have uh, uh, on, the, on the App Store. Um, you can just go to the App Store for, you know, I, uh, it's, it's only for iOS right now, not Android. Okay, just but for the you, iOS you, right you, now. You go to the, the App Store and you just type in Hudoku, H-U-E-D-O-K-U. And we have another one called Same, Same, or Different. Mm -hmm. It's a game about color relativity. You can kind of like pick whether these colors are the same or different, and it kind of mm -hmm. tests your Boy, if you're, if you're colorblind, that must really tick them off. We have, we have, I know, it's funny. We have, we have a button you can fill, people with, that are colorblind can filter and see just puzzles that uh, they can solve, that have red, red and green removed from those. <laughs> Is that right? Okay, um, cool. But the funnest one, if anybody's like actually, you know, into this, uh, likes color, wants to, you know, hide, hide photos and share them behind puzzles, uh -huh. um, sign up for our beta. And uh, that's hudoku.xyz. And then you can get the beta version that's actually live in Holland, and you can see what all the Dutch Dutch are doing right now. Okay, very very cool. Well, it was uh, it was great having you on the show, Gabe. Yeah, I thank, thank you, you so much for coming on. I mean, it's, uh, you know, one thing about uh, about this show, we don't always know. We have one person maybe sign up to be on the show, yeah. But you know, somebody else gets them before you do, and so I'm glad you decided to come on today. Absolutely, it was absolutely it's fun. Pleasure to be um, and um, I'm Chris Leith, and this is The Economy New, and I hope to catch you next week right here on OC16 on with Think Tech Hawaii. And I'll say aloha. Uh -huh, thank you. Cool. That was really good. Yeah. yeah.